Well, ladies and gentlemen, Zenimax has officially announced the Necromancer class. We are no longer speculating from the data mine, and with the announcement of the Necromancer class, they dropped a ton of details about it on their live stream today. So as you guys can see here, the Necromancer class will be coming out with Elsewhere on June 4th. So it's actually coming out at Q2 this year. So what did Zenimax kind of say about Necromancer? So we're going to go into the abilities that they talked about, but the first thing that I kind of want to mention is Necromancy in general. Zenimax mentioned throughout this video that Necromancy is kind of a taboo art they kind of said that Necromancer is not generally acceptable and it will be punishable um, like a crime. So if like a guard sees you do Necromancy or, or a person sees you do it who's like an NPC, they, they will see you doing essentially a crime and they might try to, you know, punish you or you might get a bounty. I'm not sure what the penalty will be, but it's going to be treated like a crime. So that means essentially that Necromancer is going to be very lore-friendly-esque. Now... Talking about the Necromancer class, the way that Rich kind of described it was it, it's a class that is summoning a lot of things to do stuff, but it's not going to be your traditional kind of pet centralized class. It's going to be more like wasteful summoning. So you're going to summon a skeleton that's going to do a lot of damage to your opponent, or you're going to summon a skeleton that's going to heal you, but they're not going to last forever. They're going to be like one-time casts. So the way I see this kind of working in PvP is Necromancer is going to have a lot of like stackable kind of damage abilities like that i think that we're gonna see things like uh like uh stackable heals like that where you have multiple heals over time on yourself or multiple burst heals by using these kind of delayed abilities with your skeleton i really like this kind of approach to a pet centralized build because in eso right now the pets that we have are, are more of permanent summons or kind of like random chance helm summons and that's all we really got so the necromancer is taking a very different approach to uh to this kind of uh, style of gameplay here. Now, let's dive into what Zenimax gave us for the Necromancer. So they didn't give us a ton of super um, in-depth information, but they did give us pictures of all the different trees and the names of the abilities. We have a full list of abilities here as well as an ultimate. Now, Rich also did a little bit of uh, describing about how some of these abilities work. So I'm going to kind of interpret what I think we're going to see and how it will kind of impact um, you know, Necromancer as a whole, what we'll see from the class, and more more so from that PvP point of view, what we'll see in PvP. So to begin, we have Men Flesh, and this seems to be a Necromancer just kind of sta standard heal spam ability. Um, it looks to be an AoE kind of ability. I don't know, we just kind of got these icons, so I'm speculating pretty heavily off this, but for the most part, this seems to be an ability that doesn't require a corpse or anything to use. You can just heal something with it. The next ability that we have is Summon Skeletal Mender. Now, this is like a, a summon like we had mentioned earlier, and Rich kind of described it as a wasteful summon. So I think that this will kind of function as in you summon the Mender, and he'll heal you, and then he'll go away. So it'll be kind of like a burst heal from him, or a burst heal over time that you get from the Skeletal Mender. Um, similar to kind of like when you see an NPC casting that heal ability on a friendly player. The next ability that we have is Restore Tether. And this seems to be either a heal for an ally or maybe even a draining attack. Maybe we'll see a morph going either way with this. Um, I would compare this similar to like the vampire drain. We'll see how this ability kind of works. Um, I'm going to assume that it's a heal though. It seems to be focused on taking resources and uh, maybe even some buffs from something like this. Now, the next thing that we have is Release Essence. And something that uh, Rich had mentioned throughout this kind of video was that Necromancer is going to kind of interact with the amount of corpses that are on the battlefield. And I think in PvP, this is going to have a big impact. And, and essentially, this is going to mean that Necromancer will have a very important role to play in the PvP meta to come once it's released into PvP. And uh, the reason I say it is because of this ability like Release Essence and how Rich said that the bodies can essentially be uh, uh, used up or kind of wasted. And the way this, I think, is going to work is that if, if you have uh, bodies on the ground, like a dead body, you can use it to heal yourself, you can use it to buff yourself up. And this Release Essence seems to be something like that, where, where a dead body on the ground is going to be used to grant some sort of effect to you 
or or maybe a friendly player or maybe even an attack on an opposing player and the important thing to kind of take from this ability because i really don't have an idea of what this will look like but the important thing we're taking away is that bodies will have a big part to play in combat from necromancer on and and it's going to be important to kind of like tag bodies or make sure that you waste a body uh, so that an enemy necromancer can't come by and get a buff from it, for example. So it's going to have a big effect on PvP, something like this. And I think this is also important because of the ultimate that we're going to talk about in just a little bit as well. Now, the next ability that we have is Consume Curse. And I'm going to go out on a bit of a limb here with what I think this will do and what I think it means for the Necromancer class as a whole. So the first thing I see from Consume Curse is that Necromancer will have condition removal. Just like the Warden, the new class that they're going to introduce again is going to have condition removal. I think this is absolutely fantastic because condition removal is very important for PvP and ESO. So I think for a PvP standpoint, this is going to be a really good ability. Now, Consume Curse is an interesting way that they've named it here, Consume Curse. So it doesn't just suggest that we're removing the curse, it suggests that we're going to take the curse and kind of turn it into something for ourselves, be it a buff, maybe we're going to heal ourselves from it. I think the way we morph this ability um, will, will affect that. But I, I think that what's going to happen is that we'll, we'll see a negative effect and then perhaps like we get uh, a defile on us, we use Consume Curse and instead of having the defile we turn it into major mending so that's how i hope this ability will kind of interact and it's very similar to how a necromancer in guild wars 2 kind of deals with conditions as well now the next thing that i'm really pulling from this ability is the fact that the necromancer has condition removal now something that everybody knows is that necromancer in most games has damage over time to some degree and summonables and that's usually what a necromancer focuses around this really makes me believe that a Magicka Necromancer, at least, will be very damage over time focused. Perhaps even Stamina Necromancer, depending on what kind of passives we see, will be damage over time focused as well. Um, now, the ultimate, Resurrect. This is a big reason why I think Necromancer will be a big game changer for PvP. Um, not only will the bodies have all these other effects, but we have an ultimate Resurrect here. And this is obviously going to revive a dead body it's going to bring it back to life and it's going to do combat now how this ultimate works i'm not sure is it going to revive the body for a period of time and then they're going to go back to being dead afterwards maybe or is it going to be a permanent revive maybe i i don't really know what i do know is that if it is a permanent revive this will have a massive impact on pvp a permanent revive off an alt like this is insane because you'll be able to easily build up your alt and just res your friends with your ultimate and then they can turn and fight so it'll have a huge impact on pvp if this is a permanent revive now if it's not a permanent revive and it's kind of on a timer and then they go back to being dead afterwards i think that this would be very cool for the ultimate not only would you be able to resurrect your 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 player or whatever but when you do they would be incentivized to kind of act as a resurrected zombie and something that uh, rich really stressed about necromancer throughout this video is that necromancy is an imperfect art and and that means that your abilities won't have permanence to them at least your your re revival of dead things you know so i think the resurrect I think it will have a timer, and I really hope it functions with a timer because it will encourage players to be very aggressive like a resurrected zombie, right? You can imagine that if you only have 10 seconds left, you're not going to give much thought to defense, and you're just going to go all-out offensive once you get brought up. So I think this will be a very interesting ultimate for PvP. Not only will it have a huge impact on PvP, but it will also stress the need to have a necromancer outside of this ultimate just to waste bodies so another necro can't come along and revive a bunch of dead guys on a breach or something. Alright guys, so let's take a look at the uh, damage skill line for the necromancer. So, taking a look at the first ability here, we have Burning Skull. And this seems to be just a uh, just a spammable ability. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be anything past just a spammable. I'm sure it'll have cool morphs and stuff. But, for now, it just seems to be a single target spammable. The Burning Skull maybe puts a dot or something. Here we have a Summon Skeletal Mage. Now, like I had mentioned earlier, the summons are supposed to be like wasteful summons. So, the Summon Skeletal Mage, I imagine, is going to be like a pet that you summon. And it will... It will deal damage and then go away. So I'd imagine it functions similar to like a pet, 
but the damage that it deals is going to be kind of like a sorcerer's curse where you have that delayed explosion um over time now here is the skeleton bomber ability so i think this is an interesting ability because at the moment we don't really have a lot of long-ranged aoe attacks and i imagine that the skeleton bomber is going to be just that a long-ranged aoe attack so i'm gonna, it's going to be interesting to see how this functions also because it is a skeleton that you summon it will serve as kind of a bloody uh, bleh. it will serve as kind of a body block as well as an attack when it hits your opponent so i think this is going to be a really interesting ability to see in pvp I think this will actually be like something we'll see a lot of people cast against enemy groups because it's a long-ranged AoE. We'll have to see the damage on a skill like this guy here. Now, the next ability we have is the Graveyard ability, and I can only imagine that this is going to be like a placed field damage over time ability. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to do past that. I mean, all we have is the icons here to speculate from. So uh, we'll see what it gives us. I, I'm going to think maybe some dots, though, because Necromancer is going to be dot-heavy. Perhaps this uh, will be able to summon something. We'll see what this does. The next ability we have is Siphon Energy. Um, so we had a Drain ability that looks like a heal in, uh, in the other tree. But in this tree here, we have the Siphon Energy skill. And this looks like an electricity attack. So something to note about this ability is that we actually have a corpse on the ground here that uh is in between the lightning strike as well as the player that's getting hit by the necro here so i think that this ability will be heavily tied to how many corpses are on the ground and you'll be able to kind of like siphon the power out of them to cause a huge explosion and then finally guys for the damage ultimate we have the bone dragon breath and this is going to be a dragon breath attack this will be interesting to see i can imagine that perhaps this will be something like maybe oblivion damage it'll be an irresistible attack i mean just judging by the fact that it's bone dragon breath i'd imagine that it would take on some sort of special quality but this will be what looks like a big aoe attack perhaps it'll you know cover a big distance or something but it summons what looks like a huge bone dragon so it'll be cool to see how this ultimate uh functions but this looks really aesthetically pleasing for an ultimate but anyway, let's get into the next tree that we have, and this is the tank tree. So the first ability that we have in this tree is the bone fetish. And I think we've seen this ability in-game already. If you guys have fought against enemy necromancers, you've seen this them cast this skill where they have that green field around them and there's a little totem in the middle. So I imagine that this is going to function similar to that ability, giving you some kind of a defensive buff when you're in or near the circle. The next ability that we see here is Taste of Life, and this seems like, I don't know, it looks like there's some kind of transfer going on between these two parties here. So I'm going to assume that maybe it's an ability that uh, transfers something. I don't know. I really don't know with this one. What do you guys think Taste of Life is going to do? Um, it's really tough to tell because this is the tanking tree, and these are a lot of defensive buffs, so it's hard for me to guess just based off of the picture what the defensive buff's going to do, whereas the offensive buff gives us a little bit more of an idea. The next ability that we see is Impaling Spikes. Now, this is pretty cool. Um, I want to say this is going to be a snare or an immobilize of sorts, something that perhaps snares, immobilizes, and perhaps adds a dot. I'm imagining that's what, uh, that's what we're going to get from a skill like this because we see these large spikes here and... Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking snare. This looks a lot like a snare. I don't know how this is going to deal damage. I'd imagine because it's in the tank tree, this could perhaps be an HP-based skill. I mean, every class gets an HP-based skill, so it's going to be interesting to see where Necro gets it. And uh, could this perhaps be their HP-based attack sitting in the tank tree here? Only time will tell. The next skill we have is Bone Armor, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a very generic armor buff. Um, it, it will have other properties, of course, but... For now, it's just going to be their armor buff, and we'll see what that will give them. And then the next ability that we have is Consume. And here we see a lot of uh, corpses around the body, and he's consuming them to get a buff from them. So I think this is going to function similar to the other ability that we saw in the Healing Tree, um, where it's going to kind of consume the corpse and then give you maybe a heal or a buff from it. But uh, we can only really tell from this icon. I th it says consume, so I'm assuming maybe a heal. I'm thinking maybe a heal from this bad boy. And then finally, for the ultimate, we have the Bone Colossus Transformation. And 
yeah, you get a turn into a Bone Colossus. I'm assuming that's exactly what this ultimate's going to do. It's going to be really cool to see. I've played other games where Necromancer was the class that gets kind of an ultimate transformation into some kind of like Death Reaper. So the Bone Colossus fits nicely into the ESO lore. I'm really excited to see this. And as you guys can see here, they have provided us with some beautiful art for the Bone Colossus as well, showing off what it's probably going to look like in-game. So I'm excited to see the in-game model. Excited to see these bad boys on the PTS. So guys, to kind of wrap this video up, I am really excited to see the Necromancer come. I've been waiting a long time for the class myself, so I'm super pumped to get on the PTS and start testing this bad boy out. This will not be until Q2, so I'll have to wait quite some time before I can get on there and try these abilities out and stuff like that. So most of this is... Uh, is a lot of speculation at this point. So just keep that in mind, guys. And then take into account also that Xenomax might change things as well. Um, the stuff that they've presented here is just what they have now. We don't know if this is permanent or not. This is still uh, subject to change. Uh, a few things that I did want to note before we wrap up is that Xenomax said that Necromancer is going to be a class that is going to have a bit of a higher skill curve than other classes so that's an interesting thing that they noted on there and i'm actually quite excited to uh to try the necromancer out myself and see what they mean by that and see how necromancer kind of plays i see a lot of delayed abilities so i think timing and animation canceling is going to be very important with the necro and finally guys i think that necro is going to have a huge impact on pvp um, I kind of stressed that throughout the video, but I really do, and I am excited to see what impact it will have. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I don't know if they'll be OP or underpowered, but I know that they will definitely be a very important utility. So we're going to see how Necromancer plays out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button. If you guys liked what you saw, you guys want to come chat with me a little bit more you can come check me out on twitch and then finally guys we are sponsored by what the fast they're a vpn for gamers so you guys can uh, check them out if you want to get some better ping to your favorite games totally free to try thank you guys for tuning in and i'll see you next time so more information is to come um but yeah we we can clarify there is no actual physical elsewhere collector's edition well, what am i going to put on my studio on my shelf would you quit whining